Vroom. All right, I'm not a rider myself. I'm actually a bit frightened of motorcycles, but I do appreciate the aesthetics and the skill required. From Evil Knievel to the Fonz, motorcycles have always had a certain fascination for most people. Can't you just see the pitch for this? I want to make the Fast of the Furious, but with motorcycles. Two wheels as opposed to four, so metaphorically half as good. This is torque. No, I didn't accidentally put in the Fast and the Furious. This is just a clone. Oh, look, a motorcycle. They'll never catch the Roadrunner that way. But these cars are being dicks. If watching all those dash cam videos on YouTube taught me anything, shit's about to happen. Where have we seen this before? See, they do the same internal graphics as Fast and the Furious, but we're different, not the same. Hold on, I think I'm having a stroke. Oh, it's supposed to look like that? Cute. Fast bike, huh? Yeah, he's gonna need it to outrun Samara. Not enough movies have cat transitions. Our hero, Ford, played by Martin Henderson, is back after fleeing the country. He hooks up with his little biker gang, and they piss off a rival motorcycle group by going too fast, apparently. Beep beep. Heard you was up in Indochina eating sushi and shit. Is this a race thing? This is Junior, the hot-headed brother of the leader of this gang. Oh, get a room! Oh shit, they're gonna do it. Monet Mazur plays Shane, Ford's ex, and she is so happy to see him. Can I explain? Let me guess. You're sorry, you didn't mean to hurt me, you were just trying to protect me. He meets yet another gang, led by Henry, played by Math Schultz. But this gang is already pissed at Ford. He stole and hid some of their bikes, which were full of drugs, so he wouldn't go to jail. Is this backstory in the least bit interesting? I didn't think so either. Moving on. I don't think I've seen gang moves like that since West Side Story. In what seems to be the only rave in town, Ford runs into trouble again. It must be cool. There's a giant ice cube right there. Everyone in this movie either hates him or act like they hate him. I hope he doesn't visit his grandmother, she's probably gonna stab him. Henry's gang traps Junior in a Nine Inch Nails video. What was that? On the catwalk, he does his little turn on the catwalk. Um, this is the men's room, do you mind? Unless... It's a man, baby! They strangle him with a motorcycle chain because guns and knives are what car drivers use. So Ford is framed for murdering Junior, and now Ice Cube wants revenge. Now we're gonna find out who done this. If you have any ideas, who would want to kill your brother? If I knew who did this, you have two dead bodies right now. Meanwhile, at the nastiest slip and slide ever... Seems your buddy Junior turned up dead. Feds think you did it. Reapers think you did it. Ford's group is ambushed and they try to hide in World of Warcraft. Now it's mano y mano, and I think this would be more impressive if this wasn't digital. These aren't stunts, it's a cartoon. I keep wanting to press A. See, we can all get along. I'm seizing the day! How do you sneak up on someone on a motorcycle in the middle of the desert? Three dudes, a girl, and a couple of bikes. My god, he just summarized the entire screenplay. In a couple of scenes that are strictly filler, Dane Cook arrives and gets beaten up. And his car gets trashed. Hmm. Usually the Hummer is inside the sports car. They finally set the story straight with Ice Cube, but what's with that chopper? Thank you for flying Photobomber Air. If you look to the right, you'll see a very silly movie being made. We love you and are we there yet? Ford and Ice are now working together to take down the bad guys. And I'm pretty sure this is how they finance this movie. Crystal meth! So this bike joust is sponsored by Mountain Dew and Pepsi. Dueling with bikes. I think I've seen it all. How does she maintain speed when she keeps letting go of the throttle? I don't ride, and even I know that. Now it's Ford versus Henry. 
Henry's on a motorcycle, and Ford is on a jet-powered superbike in a surprisingly traffic light Los Angeles. This should be cool, right? This gets insane, but not really in a good way. I mean, how can it miss? They have a fist fight. On bikes. This should be awesome. But it's so... artificial. Who needs a stunt coordinator when you have Adobe After Effects? But it's so over-the-top insane that it's just hilarious. Ford hits him with his bike. Which explodes. Henry's toast, but Ford survives. All of this without a helmet. Ford's cleared, he's got a new buddy, and he's back together with his girl. You know what she could do for me? Please say drop dead, please say drop dead, please take me to Mexico. I think it's supposed to be funny when they're kissing and you can hear their leather clothes squeaking together. Then they head to Mexico. Why? Who gives a shit? And that was Torque. You get the feeling the filmmakers knew this was a bit of a silly concept, so the movie doesn't exactly take itself too seriously. It's very light in tone, doesn't get too emotional, and it tries to poke fun at the genre. But that poking almost gets hypocritical. They use the same shots, the same quick editing, the same bizarre camera angles. Half of a Fast and Furious movie, but it's still a Fast and Furious movie. The evil characters are cliche stereotypes. And I do like Ice Cube. He doesn't have a huge range, but he's usually pretty good at what he does. He killed me in the Jump Street movies. But here he's just kind of... meh. The tough guy with the screw-up little brother he obviously cares about. But if he cared about him so much, don't be in that lifestyle. Did Boys in the Hood teach him nothing? The camera work in this movie is pretty kinetic. It's fast, quick cuts, and it's hyperactive. Even the credits don't stop moving. It's like looking at a kaleidoscope through another kaleidoscope. There was a time when digital effects were the domain of the science fiction movie, but now even comedies have CG, so why not? And they do some strange things with the camera that add nothing. What was the point of that shot? Or that shot? Or that one? Okay, cat transition was awesome. You know, when a movie uses CGI so heavily, it kind of kills the cred when they do a legit stunt. It doesn't matter if it looks real, my mind is already doubting it. There's little sense of danger or tension. The story, I use quotes because this movie is less a story and more like a cinematic equivalent of an eight-year-old with ADHD reenacting movie cliches with toy motorcycles while freebasing pixie sticks. One take, baby. <laughs> At least the soundtrack fits and there's some good stuff in there. There's a lot of tongue wagging in this movie. I don't mean talking, I mean this. It's mostly fast-paced, which is good. When it slows down, it has nothing to fall back on. You don't care about the characters, the plot, or the relationships. Bring back the shiny things. This was a tongue-in-cheek exaggeration of the Fast and Furious franchise, which only had two movies when this came out. But if they left it alone, Fast and Furious would have done this by themselves. So I'm giving Torque a 2 out of 5. The story's cliche, the characters are stock off-the-shelf tropes, and it's a constant barrage on the senses. But it's still kind of fun to watch with friends. Where else are you going to find two women dueling with motorcycles? And don't forget Dane Cook getting his ass beat. If you like this video, give a thumbs up and subscribe. You know you want to. Do you ride motorcycles? What do you like about them? Leave a comment below. This is the newbie, and as always, thanks for watching. Vroom. Bikers.